Hello, I'm Jake Kulkowski, and I'm joined, of course, by Gareth Evans, and this is Pretty Good Gaming. Hey. I hope you're okay. We're here for a conversation about bugs in games. Uh, we've just read some new information. I'm going to share it with you guys, and we're going to give you our take on it. We want to hear your take on it, and we'll have a look at what critics are saying about bugs in general. What am I on about? Well, let me get straight into this one. It was reported on GamesIndustry.biz on Tuesday, May the 8th. Players are less concerned by bugs than bad game design. That's what this uh, study has found. Now, this is a study of over 10 million reviews on Steam, and it was done by a university in Canada. Uh, over 6,000 different games, and it was a study of like negative feedback. What makes people leave negative reviews? Mm-hmm. In this study, it was found that only 17% of negative reviews were because of bugs. 57, so over half of all the negative reviews, were down to game design issues, yeah. right? But only 17% were down to to bugs yeah the only other real key thing there is that there's 42 percent of, of instances where positive reviews had mention of bugs but they were still positive yeah so it, the general gist of it is just over one in ten people who give a game a bad review are doing it because of bugs yeah and nearly half of people who say that they like a game still like it even though there's there's bugs in it so first things first really Guys, it's our job to look at like gaming, like culture, the lifestyle on a daily basis. We look at the consumer side of it, we look at the industry side of it, and we do it every day. So with your knowledge of the culture and gaming opinions that we hear and stuff like that, are you kind of surprised about this? Or is this what you expected really, that people don't seem to be given bad reviews solely on on bugs i think um, there's a couple of things to pick up on uh, by this analysis they're not saying that bugs are excusable or that bugs aren't bad what they're saying is that um bad game designers were are worse than bugs right so yeah. that's an important distinction to make from the right from the get-go they're not saying bugs are okay they're saying that get bad game design is worse and a couple of things based on those two um mm-hmm. <clears throat> things right bugs are objectively um, classified, right? You can see that something's wrong. It's supposed to be right, but it's wrong. That's objective, right? Whereas yeah. um, game design decisions are more subjective, right? Yeah. So you could you could des- decide that okay, the game's supposed to be l- like this, or, the, or like the creative director of a game might decide to put a certain game. Uh, elements in there but you might not um, agree with that on like a personal level you might not think that that's a, a good choice for game design or whatever totally, so yeah. you might not like that even though that was the intended thing which is completely different to a bug which is something that's completely unintended so yeah. um, I think there's more scope for people to be I, I don't know dislike certain um, parts of games whereas some good, bad game design can just like flat out be bad game design what I'm trying to say is that some what might be good game design might not appeal to the master so people might use yeah. that as a reason not to like a game yeah you could just not like space games so you play a space game and give it a, a bad review doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad space yeah, you game might just like it might just not like exactly. it exactly whereas a bug is kind of never there on purpose yeah you know um, but a lot of people well I reckon they'll nearly everybody listening to this will have had an experience with a bug whether it's game breaking or just a minor bug sometimes they can be quite funny sometimes they can be an inconvenience like have you encountered the game that's ever had a bug that's affected your enjoyment of it or can you think of like the last time you saw yeah well kingdom come deliverance um it was a game i was highly anticipating Mm. and it looked like the kind of game i would get into like a gritty realistic type of um history based game um and It was plagued by bugs on on release, and I kind of overlooked them to begin with because I was enjoying the game so much, but eventually they start grinding down at you. There's just so many bugs. Eventually it did detract from my enjoyment of the game, and I stopped playing through it because I was waiting for the updates, waiting for the (laughs) the newest patch in order to fix the bugs that I was... um, How how did you play the game too? Uh, I had to start it again. I had to start it again twice. Twice. And when I say a game-breaking bug, it was that um, my attack button wasn't registering. So that's the most like important thing in the game, really. Yeah. I couldn't combat was just n- nothing I could do, and and it happened. The same thing happened twice. So just like what you said, then I waited until the patch was was coming. I, I was playing it on console, right? So the patches were delayed even more so, and it just kills the momentum, doesn't it? You know, we're yeah, quite yeah, busy. Yeah. We've got lots of games coming in and out, and momentum a lot of the times how I ride the game to the end. Like, uh, and if the wind's taken out my sails by something like that, like twice in a row. 
I, it really does make me think, oh, it's, I, it sours it, doesn't it? Yeah, what, what would real. Um, otherwise be a really enjoyable experience from a game like that. And I remember Fallout New Vegas was a game that was released with a lot of bugs. And I yeah. uh, was lo- one of the lucky ones to not have experienced a lot of uh, mm. bugs in, in that game. But apparently, like everyone else, everyone else and their, and their fathers did, apparently. So yeah, yeah. Um, for that for you, it wasn't tarnished, okay? Fallout New Vegas is, is one of the greatest games in my, in my book. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, this is a case where bugs didn't really um, detract from the reception of the game too badly either because it's yeah. still held as one of the best games in the Fallout series. Yeah, it's an interesting one, New Vegas, because, like, well, Bethesda games, right? I know New Vegas isn't, but Be- Bethesda developed games, any Fallout game really is is always buggy on release. I've always been lucky, like like you, right? If I've ever had the glitch, it's been like a minor one, like, you know, uh, an enemy will go flying into the air or something like that. But Liam in the office, when we were talking about buggy games and examples of it, the first thing he said was... Oh, New Vegas when I got it. But yeah. um, New Vegas is interesting because it was released eight years ago, 2010, all right? Uh, and it did cause a bit of a stir because of the bugs in there. Ars Technica, quite um, a prestigious, you know, website that yeah, to yeah. do a lot of articles. They don't normally do, like, edgy little, like, stuff like this. But this is, I'm going to read just one of the headlines. It's straight up one of the headlines. Fallout New Vegas is buggy as hell. Where's the outrage? They're asking why yeah. people aren't more annoyed and why people are so tolerant of this game. Yeah. Ultimately, they did give it a buy rating, you know, because they can they have a sale, buy yeah. and miss. They give it a buy. But critically, it did do quite well. It's It was sat at an 84 when it came out yeah. on Metacritic. Um, so the reputation of the game itself having bugs was outmatched really by how good the game was and that's a perfect yeah. example like you were saying about kingdom come you were playing it and trying to ignore the bugs because you're enjoying the game but sometimes it can take you out of it new vegas stood the test of time stood the bugs anyone playing it now yeah. will never know that will they yeah. really Did that, that's true i mean bethesda games are notorious for their bugs like skyrim's and you know yeah. there's still bugs in skyrim to still this day now, and they're releasing yeah. it on the like, switch and that and the bugs still carried over to the new yeah. ports and that yeah it's Kind of inexcusable in a way, but it's it's testament to how game design is more important, right? Because New Vegas and I guess Skyrim to a certain extent too is like the game is designed so well, you can have so much fun with it yeah. that and the bugs can be fixed. Game, bad game design can't. Yeah. Um. So game design is a hell of a lot more important in the long run for things. People are always up in arms about bugs. That's just how they are. I mean, a lot of people mm-hmm. criticize a lot of developers for bugs, and they can't look past that. Um, but that's you know each to their own. That's some people. But for me, you know, I can overlook bugs when the game is good enough. Yeah, uh, it was quite surprising to me that the main reason that people gave bad reviews was the game design. So I, I was quite surprised by that because anyone who's who's just spent like forty pounds or sixty dollars on a product and then it doesn't work, not because of a yeah. game design issue, because of a bug. I had a feeling it'd be a bit more hot headed about it, to be honest. And yeah. I was quite surprised to see that. Yeah, a lot of people seem to be like patient and, and they, yeah. they won't disregard it straight away, which is quite interesting it's important to say though that bugs are not excusable like games should be finished games should be Hmm. um ironed out Uh, however when it's an open world rpg type of game there's just so much to it like there's there's like so many quests so many things in the world it's almost impossible to iron out all those bugs and that's kind of excusable for games like skyrim and um it's fun like vegas in the short term and kingdom come delivers to a certain extent as well it's It's logical right the bigger the grid the more room there is for things to fall through and i i feel like that's another discussion point that obviously if you're listening to this you know open it up in the comment section like uh because some people i've seen it leaving comments on our videos are dead set against day one patches some people are a little bit more under standing towards them but like you're saying the way that games are going the scope of things is getting so bigger um they're either going to invest in need to invest in more testers or things like this are, are going to happen but uh, i was going to ask you your opinion on it but yeah I, I guess i already know games shouldn't really have them in as much but at the same time you can kind of understand why they do you're not completely yeah i mean we don't we're not game developers we don't know the trials and tribulations yeah. involved in developing a game and having to um add to a game periodically and then like your additions to the game might bring up new mm. new problems and bugs and and uh, old problems that surface uh, just 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 from the um usual process of expanding a game and, and adding new content to a game might might ruin it in certain extent so i, I can excuse it to a certain extent to a certain point and I can overlook it because the games are great however when bugs are just so hard and there's so many of them they come Mm -hmm. so thick and fast right games like Kingdom Come Deliverance that it takes out the momentum like we discussed earlier that gets a point where it's like it's too much just fix your game and then release yeah the, the bugs have become a feature of that game so much so that on Metacritic which 
Um, you know, you might care about it, you might not, but lots of games live and die based on their Metacritic scores. Uh, like M- Mike, for example, in the office buys a game based on critic scores. A lot of the time he'll say, I'll wait for the reviews. And so when he sees something like Kingdom Come Deliverance with a 69 on Metacritic in that yellow font, it's not building up much confidence. You look at the reasons why, lots of it's down to bugs. And this is something I just wanted to, to ask you about. Um, let me first build my case okay there's a couple of examples in the past year where games were getting absolutely slams for having bugs in right jim sterling gave hellblade a one out of ten after a quote-unquote bug which was immediately changed to a seven when he calmed down and realized he kind of yeah. brought it upon himself but the reason i'm bringing that up is that his finger was on the trigger and he was so ready to give that game a one out of ten if it wasn't his fault if that really was a bug mm-hmm. he would have done a one out of ten but then he changed it to a seven dan stapleton from ign gave prey a four out of ten because of a game-breaking bug that he encountered twice, I believe. Mm-hmm. Then he came back after they fixed it, and he gave it an 8. Kingdom Come still a 6.9. The yeah. reason I'm bringing this up is because there's examples of games getting 1s and 4s, and then they move into 7s and 8s. And bugs are never there by a design. So I'm wondering, do you think that reviewers have got, kind and critics, especially ones that affect Metacritic scores and stuff like that, have got a sort of responsibility to to revisit games after they've been patched and, and give it a, a, a look at how the game's supposed to be played? Or do you think that it's, this is all down to sort of the developer's responsibility? And if your game goes out not ready to play for a developer, uh, for a critic, sorry, that they deserve the bad score? Like, have you got any thoughts on that? If re- yeah, re-reviews and stuff? It's a difficult one because um, you can't review every game twice or even, mm-hmm. you know, because there's just so many games. There's no responsibility yeah. on the reviewer to, to give a game to reviews. That's I think that's ridiculous. But we haven't seen we have seen recently games like For Honor getting a, uh, a re-review yeah. a year after release, and that makes sense for an online game that does evolve over time. Yeah. Um, but a, an RPG game like um, some of the that we've discussed today, uh, one review is should be more than enough, right? Like yeah. Fallout New Vegas and and uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance and Hellblade for that for that extent. Um, so the onus is definitely on the developer to get the game right. The res- responsibility is there. They can't expect other people to review the games twice yeah. because you sell a game day one as it's released it's version 1.0 the game should be right and you should and come hell or high water whatever the state the game's in at that point should be how it's reviewed yeah I completely agree with you because the way I see it is that is the point when you're willing to charge people the yes. money for it so that's the you know the level you're at so yeah you're right especially asking a, a critic because I've, I've seen developers same before to give stuff another chance at. um maybe not so much king that come deliverance but i remember prey they contacted ign asking about this yeah. um prey maybe not a great example but something like fallout new vegas and Kingdom Come, they're big games. Yeah, like you're yeah. saying, asking someone to review like an 80 hour game, yeah. you've got no chance. Um, but anyway, that's that's my thoughts on it. Uh, we just heard yours. We've heard what the Steam reviews, millions of Steam reviews have had to say, and also give you a quick uh, verdict about critics and re-reviews. That's, that's what we reckon anyway. It's a good discussion, I reckon, and it looks like the bigger yeah. the games are getting, there's more opportunities for bugs to be around. So they're probably going to be around for a very long time. And let us know what you think in the comment section below. Cheers very much, guys. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button for some more discussions like this every single day. And there's a link to some more content on the screen right now as well. as a link to our Patreon if you want to support the channel. See you soon.